Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sports Broadcasting Camp's edition of PTI. I'm joined by my co-host, Tristan Giannopoulos and Mason Schumacher. And today, we're going to be tackling some NFL topics today. And right now, we're going to be discussing uh, who will win the AFC and NFC. And we're going to start with the NFC. And Tristan, who do you think is going to win the NFC this year? I think that even though it's very hard to repeat in the, na in the National Football League, even just winning a conference championship where if you have one bad game, the playoffs can end, I think the Eagles are more likely to repeat than any other team. I still think from top to bottom they have the best roster in the league. You look around at the roster, there's no holes. They lost Hargrave and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the offseason, but they replaced them. They got uh, uh, Illinois safety Sidney Brown in the third round. They got the ninth overall pick, Jalen Carter, who's – as uh, controversial as he is, is still one of the best defensive players coming out this year. And you have Nolan Smith, who was teammates with him at Georgia. You also got Ringo. I look top to bottom, you have a ton of depth on this team. On the O-line, you have Jordan Mailata, you have Landon Dickerson, you have Jason Kelsey, uh, and you have Lane Johnson. You have uh, running back by committee, so losing Miles Sanders wasn't a big blow to their offense, per se. Uh, and you still have Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown on the outside is one of the best one-two combos in the league at receiver. And then on defense, you have so much depth at the D-lines where you can get hurt or a player can get hurt, and they can still find ways to win because they still have quality players. Not great points, great points. And now to you, Mason. Who's winning the NFC this season? Uh, just off of my unbiased opinion, I think it's going to be the Seattle Seahawks. They have a very young roster that is gonna be very entertaining to watch. They have JSN, who's a great addition to the team, and just adds to their already, I think, stacked offense. They have possibly a defensive rookie of the year in Devin Witherspoon, who is amazing in Illinois, shutting down every Big Ten, or Big 12, yeah. Big Ten team, it seemed like. Uh, just a very young team to go off of, and some other good draft picks with that. I think they could be really good NFC champions this year. My problem with that is that the Seahawks have a really solid and young roster, except the D-line worries me. You have Uchana Nwosu, who's a very underrated player, needs to be talked about more. He's still not guaranteed to have a good season this year, and on the rest of the D-line, you have a ton of question marks. Championships are won and lost in the trenches, and I don't think Seattle has enough in the trenches, especially when the tackles on Seattle may be really good, but the interior is still a question, even if they drafted Olu Oluwatami from uh, Michigan to play center in the fourth round, where I don't know how Seattle can find a way to stop the run or uh, run the ball effectively enough to where they can win the NFC championship. I, I'm with you there, but at the same time, they have made improvements towards that. They have drafted some D linemen in the third, fourth round that could be steals in the draft. We know how Pete Carroll is in drafting players. We look at Tariq Woolen last year, drafted in the fifth round, led the NFL in interceptions. I think it's no different here. I think there's some very underrated players on that roster that once they get their time to shine, prove that they are underrated and just could have explosive talent. I, I understand that, and they have a lot of explosive young talent, but that's going to have to take time to grow. Even like Woolen, who's really good right out the gate for Seattle, like Kenneth Walker, who's good out the gate, there's still going to be players like that need to develop into the, themselves. You're not going to get a Kenneth Walker to Tariq Woolen with every pick, and players who are good aren't good immediately all the time. Uh, so I don't know if, that's, if they're going to develop quickly enough in order for Seattle to make a way to the NFC Championship this year, even though I could see them doing it in following years. But you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, they are off their Super Bowl run, which was amazing. They're a very good team, I will say that, but just the fact that like, it seems like too perfect almost, if that makes sense. They have a very stacked roster. The last time that they made a Super Bowl in 2017, they won it beating Tom Brady, but you look at after that team, which was still good, and they were just not great after that. I don't see them, I see them being a good team next year, but I don't see them repeating NFC champions. All right, I think that's good for the NFC. Now let's move on to the AFC. What do you think? What do you think, Mason? I'll start with you. I think it's gonna be the Chiefs. I think they're the obvious pick. I think 
they've made it consistently to the AFC Championship game every single year that they've had Patrick Mahomes on their roster. I It's really kind of a no-brainer here. They are even better than last year, I'd say. I'd say this team has a legitimate chance of repeating again. All right. Now, Tristan. Okay. I do understand Kansas City pick, and I can see it because they're a very good team. You have Mahomes and Kelsey, which is pretty much all you need on that offense in order to produce. You can put in running backs, and they can produce like Jarek McKinnon last year, like Damian Williams a few years back when they played the Niners in the Super Bowl. Uh, however, we keep saying year after year, this is the Bills' year. This is the Bills' year. And it keeps not happening. And I understand that there's a lot of doubt coming in with this team. They didn't add a ton of pass catchers besides Dalton Kincaid in the draft from Utah, the tight end. Uh, however, I think with getting Von Miller back, with getting the entire defense basically coming back, they didn't lose anybody in the offseason. Uh, still having digs, even if there's something going on there in, uh, internally with drama, you still have Gabe Davis, who I don't know if is a, is a true wide receiver too in today's day and age compared to the T. Higgins or Devontae Smith of the world, but he's still a capable number two receiver. You have Dal uh, you have Dawson Knox, who's a good tight end. You got Kincaid. You can put him around in the slot at uh, some plays, and you can make uh, really good run after catch plays at the tight end position. Uh, I think that with Josh Allen, who I think is the top two, top three QB in the league, you can bait him and Burrow. I think that the Bills are finally going to, this is the year they're finally going to break through and make it to the AFC champion, or win the AFC championship, rather. It's, I, it's weird to think that, but it's also, the Bills, we've, like you said, we've been saying that every year, and they have not delivered that list. This is their year, this is their year, which sounds like a Cowboys fan, I'll say. But <laughs> what my problem is with that is that their offense, I think, can go, we've seen them go head to head. I believe last year's, or the year before that, the divisional round was one of the cl classic, all time, one of the best games anyone's ever watched. They have very top tier offenses, but I see the Chiefs defense being better than the Bills. I, it's just, they beat them every year, and it's, I'd see them being maybe third, fourth in their conference they they beat them but to say the chiefs are, are defensive better than the bills is complete like h heinous to me uh you look at the uh chiefs defense chris jones very great defensive tackle underrated and you got some players in the secondary who are young and improving and you got some linebackers who are young and improving you look at the bills you have von miller at the d-line who they're going to get back who's still on under contract who was a very there was a very big difference when he was playing for the bills last year Versus when he got hurt, the Bills' defense completely changed. They went from a very good defense, elite defense even, to just a good defense. Uh, you have Poyer and Hyde, the best safety duo in the league. I don't think that's a debate uh, at all. You have Tredavious White, top five corner in the game, not talked about enough either. Uh, you have Matt Milano, a linebacker who's a very good pass coverage, very good at run stopping. Uh, you may have lost Tremaine Edmonds, but the core pieces to that defense are still there. Uh, and if Allen can, for one game, outplay Mahomes, I think they can take home the championship. All right. Well, that seems like all the time we have. For Max Pelter, Tristan Giannopoulos, and Mason Schumacher, that was our PTI. Have a great night.